In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to create this bouncy text animation. With that being said, let's hop straight into After Effects. So in here, I have a 1920 by 1080 canvas as per usual, nothing special there, and at 24 frames per second. First thing we're going to do is create our text layer, and I'm just going to name this Bounce. Just center this up like a bad boy, change the font to Integral just because I like it a little more. Sorry, Dharma. Scale it down a little bit just for some much delicioso. And then once we have that centered up and have the text the size we want it to be, I'm going to right click on the bounce text and create shapes from text. I'm going to rename this first layer to Guide just so we have it in case we need it. And then I'm going to use the Motion Tools plugin, which is free. I highly recommend getting it and extracting all the shapes from the shape layer. This is going to make it so much easier animating what we want to animate. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide all these layers. I'm just going to keep the B. I'm just going to center this up because that's the first thing we want to work with. So I'm going to open the position and rotation parameters just by clicking P and R. And then I'm going to keyframe the position. And then I want to envision what a bounce might look like. So I want to go back a little bit. I want to take this down a little bit and then go back a little bit and up a little bit and then go back and down. So now we have this. So we already have the foundations of a little bounce. Now we just need to finesse the keyframing a little bit to give it a little bit more impact. I'm gonna start by highlighting all of them and just using flow to ease my keyframes. And then I'm gonna open the speed graph editor. And I use the speed editor just cause it's a little nicer for me. And I'm just gonna zoom in here so I can see what we're doing. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna drag all these bottom keyframes that are at the bottom. I wanna drag them up and that just keeps the momentum flowing through so it doesn't come to a complete stop, it just kind of carries that momentum forward. And that's one thing that helps sell your animations a lot, is just using that little bit of momentum to make sure it doesn't look like it's a robot that's making them. So just keeping the animation flowing, making it seem more organic rather than coming to a complete stop, then starting an animation again. So already just by doing that, we have a way nice animation. Now I do want to drag out the final keyframe just a little bit and move this back a little bit maybe just to give it a little bit more time to settle and relax in. So just like that, we have something that looks way better. Now I'm just gonna take this middle part and I'm just gonna scoot this a little closer just so we get a little bit more impact here. So playing that back, we now have that. So that just gives it a little bit more impact, nothing too crazy. And we can also finesse our initial animations. I'm just gonna highlight this and just move it in a little bit. So now we have just a little bit more impact, just makes it look a little bit more dramatic. Now, the next thing I wanna to add to this is some rotation. And I want the rotation to end right about here, so I'm gonna keyframe it and just go back to the beginning and type minus one. So now if we ease these keyframes as well, let's have a look at what we have. So now we just have this slight spin, boom. And then as it comes up, it kind of settles into its own. Pretty simple animation already, but we already have the basics of a bounce. It is a bit fast for me, so I'm gonna select these position keyframes and hold Alt while dragging it. And that's just gonna space out the keyframes evenly. And then I'm just gonna move these back a little bit and just adjust this, the rotation to fit the, anime, the new time we have. So playing that back, we just have a little bit more simple, nothing too crazy. And I'm actually just gonna move this back one and then this a little bit more, just so the rotation starts a little bit before because what I'm gonna do is I wanna get to a point where it has picked up some momentum and then I'm just gonna shorten the layer to start right there. Just cause I don't want that initial boring slow pace. So I just wanted to come in, boom. And that just adds a little bit to it. Now I do want to drag this out just a little bit. It's a little bit fast. Just like that, we have a pretty simple animation. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use our guide layer. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm just gonna set the opacity by clicking T and setting it to 10. And then after it has settled, I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna create a null. Now you can create a null normally and link it or you can use this void plugin from Battlewax, which is free which is just an easier way of creating nulls, but I'm just gonna click the void, which is basically a null. And then I'm gonna use this to animate the rest of the beat. So the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna change the anchor point to be at the bottom corner. The reason for this is I want this to slide to the left into its spot, but I want to add a little bit more movement to it. So we're gonna overshoot it just a little bit, kind of like it's almost breaking really hard and tipping over and then settling back down. By setting the anchor point down there, we can 
if I pull up the rotation, it'll rotate around that. So we can create kind of a, uh, and then settle back down. I'm gonna keep the position and rotation. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna unseparate these just cause I like having them together in this instance. Keyframe the position, move forward a little bit and just scoot it into its place right there. As this comes in, I want to keyframe about here. Gonna keyframe the rotation and overshoot it. So it kind of whoom, and then bounce back down a little bit and back to zero. So now we have this. We want to adjust the timing of this a little bit, so I'm just gonna ease all of them. And one thing I'm actually gonna do is I want this to happen the position to start happening as soon as this happens, just so we carry that momentum forward. You can do more than one thing at a time. You don't have to wait for one animation to be over to start the next one. I think I wanna drag this rotation out a little bit so it starts building up that just a little bit more just to create some anticipation almost, and then we get that break. A little bit more time to settle, and I'm just gonna go into our rota rotation, and I'm just gonna move these keyframes down a little bit because as we talked about, we wanna carry that momentum so now we have that. And I'm just gonna go into my position and just have a look at what we have here. And maybe I wanna speed it up right at the end just to create that impact that would then force it to kind of overshoot a little bit, if that makes sense. So by slowly picking up the speed and hitting just about the high as it comes to the stop, if I just zoom out here and just adjust my comp so we can see what we have. So if we play it back, this is what we have. Next bit I wanna do is I wanna animate the rest of the text. Once this starts going back, I want the rest of the text to bounce up just to keep the animation simple, but still keep some visual interest. So I'm just gonna hide all the rest of my layers. I'm gonna select my layers, click P and R, and then I'm just gonna keyframe the position first. I'm gonna move this forward a little bit. I wanna be able to see my layer, so I'm just gonna unhide that. Kinda of emulate the same bounce that we had previously for the B. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I'm gonna go up and go back a little bit and down. I'm gonna take these keyframes, move them out a little bit, take the rest of these, move them a little bit closer just so we have that time to settle, just so we get that nice little settle. Select all of them, ease them, now we have this. Now, it's a little bit too long to settle, so if we do this, it just looks a little bit better. It still looks very mechanic, so that's where we're gonna go in and lift up our points down here. So I'm just going to select these and just move them up. So if we play that back again, we have a pretty decent bounce. And it really doesn't have to be much harder than that, especially when you combine it with a bunch of moving elements. Everything doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. We're going to add some rotation to it as well. So I'm just going to command click all of these rotations. I want the rotation to come up, boom, boom, boom. And as it gets to about here, I want the rotation to end. So I'm going to keyframe that go back and set them to minus one. So if you play back, we have a rotation, but I wanna create some variations. So every other one, I'm just gonna to set to one just to get some counter movement. So now I'm just gonna select all of this and open my keyframe so I can see them all combined. And I'm just gonna take these, move it forward a little bit and just select all of my rotation keyframes and ease them because we didn't, that's bad. And then I'm just gonna select my layers and click U, bring them up and play it back. First, I just wanna get the right timing down. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab all of these rotations and move them back a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take my positions and I'm just gonna spread them out just a little bit more the same way we did before, just by holding Alt. And then we can actually take these and move them back even more. This is all nice and dandy, but one thing I love to do is make them come in a bit randomly. So if we re-show our layers here, we can see our tech B comes in and then right as that starts to move, I want these to come in. And then I'm just gonna use the motion tools again. This is probably the easiest way. I'm just gonna use the offset of five and then I'm just gonna click the sequence button because I have the random one selected over here. And then it's just gonna randomize when it starts coming in. And then we can just adjust accordingly, just moving forward a little bit more. So we kind of get this animation. So if you play that back, this is what we have. And that's a pretty simple bounce animation, but there's one thing that especially classic cartoons and animations use, and that is motion trails. Because in After Effects, we do have motion blur. So if we turn motion blur on for all of this, it would look 
very modern and very clean, which is of course a look you can go for, but personally, I love, and you might've guessed this already based on my other tutorials, Echo. So right now it looks like an absolute mess, but we can adjust this. We're gonna set the timing to 0 .0, 0, 0 0.001, and then set the trills to about 70. And I'm just gonna composite in front. And if we play this back now, we get that nice motion trail that is very characteristic for old school animations. As we get to about this point, I'm gonna keyframe the number of echoes and I'm just gonna go down a little bit and just set that to zero just to kind of ease it off a little bit. So we don't want it to be too crazy. We wanna kind of control it a little bit so we don't have a bunch of trails for every little movement we do. So just while it's at the fastest, I want there to be the trails to give up that sense of motion that it's moving really fast. One thing you can do if you want is add pressurized time to just add to that hand animated feel and then just set it to half your frame rate. So 12, play that back and classic animation right there on a computer. And just like that, we have some bouncy text. And the bounce animation is something you can apply to everything. And with shapes, I would recommend using squash and stretch as well. You can use it with the text, but sometimes it just looks a bit wonky. Thank you so much for watching along. I hope you learned something new or at least enjoyed watching along. I appreciate you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week.